Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play the Lonesome Fiddle Blues. <laughs> Lonesome Fiddle Blues was written by Vassar Clements, uh, probably my favourite fiddler, and he wrote it back in 1948. Uh, he was not, I think, a prolific tune writer, and he kind of sat on this pretty well uh, until 1972. He was playing at the time with Bill Monroe, and either Bill Monroe never heard it, or didn't fancy it, but um, it was never recorded by the Bluegrass Boys. Uh, it was in 1972, I think, that it first was recorded with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, I, um, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, and that's a great version. Uh, also recorded three years later on um, Olden in the Way, and an even better version. Charlie Daniels used this tune as the basis of The Devil Went Out to Georgia, and the story goes that he wrote that tune, that song, so fast that he wasn't even aware that he was copying um, Vassar's tune and uh, discovered later to some embarrassment. Um, I'm going to give you two versions of this tune. The first one is the, the closest I could get to a standard version because if you listen to Vassar playing it uh, every time he plays it different even there's actually a video of him teaching this tune and he plays it uh, three or four times and he plays it differently each time. So obviously in his head he doesn't, he didn't really have this tune kind of fixed. It was a, um, like a road map <laughs> rather than a detailed plan of what was going to happen. So I've tried to boil it down to the simplest possible version uh, which I'll give you first and then I'll give you a version which has got some of his tastiest licks and these are selected from various of his recordings. Um, he starts off with a, a shuffle, usually, a, a, a natural shuffle, also known as a taters. And if you're not sure about the natural shuffle, I do have a video about that. So we're starting off... Um, fast to make any sense and the bowing is quite important. Um, it is probably possible to do it quite a lot of separate bows but that um, I think all separate bows it, ju it just doesn't sound right and the faster you get the more tempting it is to do slurs. So I've given you a mixture of uh, slurring threes and fives in the, the first half which kind of makes it interesting um, in the, the middle part I've done four to the bow um, which when you're going fast makes a lot of sense uh, if it's going really fast then eight to the bow that's pretty good as well. So I would just suggest that you try various different types of bowing and um, whatever speed you're going to take it to work out what is the best bowing for that speed. But it certainly has got to be fast and flowing. <clears throat> uh, there's quite a lot of tricky stuff in there even on the simple version. Uh, the, at the end of the first line <laughs> Open, four, four, two, open. You could 
could do open 4-3-2, uh, I just prefer that slide. Um, these two bars is not something he does every time, but that is the half of a, a lick which we're going to do in the second version. Uh, so that will kind of make sense when we get to that. Let's do that again at moderate tempo with the backing. second version with interesting stuff I'll go through it line by line so the first line I think is pretty much the same <laughs> apart from the third bow where we've got a flattened E and then a chromatic run so half of that bar is chromatic. Let's just do that line again. One, two, three, four. Okay, second line. So I think that's pretty much the same as we did previously. But a syncopation as a slur into the next bar. So here we're doing fourth finger playing an A flat. And then. So we're E flat. And the E flat again. And it's certainly best, I think, if you slur those together. Let's do that line, line again. One, two, three, four. And these flattened or bluesy notes are very characteristic of Vasa's playing. So we're repeating this line. Okay, now into a, a really fancy lick. And this is one you can use in a lot of other places if you want. So we're going, uh, it's a G chord. We're doing an arpeggio. And doubling that um, there. So into third position and open one, two. Staying in third position, open two, three. So it's up and down the same. And uh, with the idea in mind of using it elsewhere. You can see how useful an idea it is. Okay, let's just do that again. One, two, three, four. Then we've got and this that's a very characteristic Vasa lick. Uh, it's the flattened um, seventh. He does that lots. Uh, next lick. Uh, probably the hardest. So we're starting on a, uh, it says an E chord, G sharp with a B above it. Keep your first finger on and play the B with an E above it. And then 
keeping your first finger on, third finger down to second finger, up to third finger. So the fingering, once you get used to it, is fairly easy. It's a lot easier than it looks. And you're rocking backwards and forwards over the two strings. Uh, there's this very similar lick to this. Which Vassar also does, where you slide both fingers. Slide them both down, but here you're keeping the first finger in the same place. And then the final lick of this bridge. Uh, so we've got again that little lick there. And then into the next line. And it's pretty hard to go from that major feel of the A to the minor feel. We've got a bit of chromatic. Let's do that a few times. Okay, and then another classic lick. So it's um, chromatic from a C down to an A, and you can either play this three, two, two, one. Or four, three, two, one. And then the same thing moves up to the next string. Next string again. So. Final line. So this, this uh, final two bars is not in the first version we did. Fourth finger. So there's lots to work on here. Um, I would suggest that you perhaps do a mixture of the first and second versions because some of the second version you might just find too tricky. Or you might find other licks from uh, other Vassa versions of this that you really like and you can stick those in instead. So as I say, this second version is a hodgepodge of licks that I have put together from various Vassa recordings. But um, you could equally well do a completely different version made up of a completely different set of <laughs> equally valid Vassa licks. Okay, I'm going to play uh, this again at moderate tempo with the backing. Having um, slowed down and listened to in quite some detail the, these various Vassa recordings, he has something very unusual about the, his intonation, and I'm not saying he plays out of tune, I'm saying that he has a different way of playing uh, intonation. And I've heard it mentioned before that he uses kind of neutral intervals uh, to some extent, and if anyone um, understands this properly and can uh, tell me in the maybe in the comments below exactly what it is that he does to get that special sound in terms of his intonation I'll be very interested to know because it's pretty consistent and it never sounds wrong what he does but it, it, it isn't the notes on the piano it isn't those um, those directly in tune notes that he plays he, he's got his own way of approaching that Anyway, if you would like a copy of these two versions of the tune, then do subscribe and send me an email. And I'll send you a copy in PDF. Uh, if you would like to help uh, support the work I'm doing making these videos, um, then do join me on Patreon. And one of the many benefits you'll get there is a zip file with all of my PDFs on there. 
as well as quite a lot of videos that are not uh, publicly available. Um, I'll play you out with uh, attempting to play this up to full speed. I look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs> Thank you.